Well, hello everyone and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here for worship today at Douglas UCC. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. And thank you to our director of music, Peter Black, for playing that beautiful prelude for us just now from his home. Well, this holiday weekend here in the United States, we are celebrating Memorial Day tomorrow, a time to honor and mourn the military personnel who have died in service of our country. Our UCC Minister for Chaplains, Reverend Stephen Boyd, has written a beautiful prayer for Memorial Day. Would you please read it along with me now? Today we pause to remember our comrades in uniform, those whom we have loved and lost while serving our nation. In our thoughts and prayers, may we express our gratitude for their service and respect the cost and sacrifices that each have made. And in these challenging times, O God, inspire us, encourage us, and empower us to reach out to our veterans and their families, that through our actions, we may pay homage and give due respect to those who have given their all. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Well, as many of you know, today is the very last day, after 15 months, that I will be preaching here in an empty church. Next Sunday at 10 a.m., we will return to in-person services here at Douglas UCC. Now, if you're not quite ready to return to church, or if you're one of our viewers watching from afar, please know that our services will be recorded each Sunday morning and will then be available to view on Sunday afternoons. If you haven't already, we recommend that you click the red subscribe button on our church's YouTube channel and then click on the little bell. That way, you'll be notified whenever a new video is posted. However you choose to worship with us moving forward, either in person or from home, please know how grateful we are for your continued presence and continued support of our little church. Today, on the first Sunday after Pentecost, the Christian Church celebrates what's known as Trinity Sunday. And during today's special service, we are going to be joined by UCC leaders from around the country in word and in prayer. We begin today's Trinity Sunday service with words from Reverend Chris Davies. You may remember a few years ago that Reverend Davies initiated a series of trading cards honoring and highlighting LGBTQ clergy members. She currently serves on the national staff of the United Church of Christ. So here with today's call to worship is Reverend Chris Davies. People of God, gather in. Gather in from near and far, east and west, north and south. Gather in from across the internet and through the telephone. Gather in from the couch and from the pew and all the way from me to you. Gather in and listen for the word of God blowing yet again in the spirit winds around us. Drunk on the word, imbibed of spirit alone, listen for the ways church is made new. With the Pentecostal spirit ablazed, we are strong through all we have known this past year with adaptation, innovation, and invitation present beyond what we thought we knew, gather in to witness the strengthening of the church.
Each Sunday at Douglas UCC, we not only hear a reading from the Bible, but we also hear a contemporary reading, which we call our words of integration and guidance. They will be read for us now by Reverend Daryl Goodwin. Last December, Reverend Goodwin stepped into his new role as Executive Conference Minister for the UCC's Southern New England Conference. In doing so, he became the first black LGBTQ person in the country to hold such a high-ranking leadership position in the United Church of Christ, overseeing some 600 congregations. So here with today's words of integration and guidance is Reverend Daryl Goodwin. We've come to a part in our service where we are all being invited to pray. As I was thinking about what I might offer in words of prayer today, I was reminded of some sage words by Bishop Oscar Romero. And so I ask you to close your eyes with me as we enter into Bishop Oscar Romero's words today in a poem prayer he wrote called Prophets of a Future, Not Our Own. Join me. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that can be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about, my friends. We plant the seeds that will one day grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything. And there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us, my friends, to do something and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for God's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We, my friends, are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Creator God, walk with us, speak through us, and teach us to walk alongside you in this work and lift the heavy burden of us knowing we do not do it alone. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading today will be read for us by four UCC pastors from around the country. These pastors come from different backgrounds and ethnicities, but they're coming together today in this season of Pentecost to share the good news that the Spirit of God has come for all of us and that we are all one. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages about their faith, as the Spirit gave them ability. And even today, we hear the gospel proclaimed around the world in our partner churches in Latin America and the Caribbean, the Middle East and Europe, East Asia and the Pacific, Africa and Southern Asia. God bestows upon us the Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant, faithful people of all ages, tongues and races. God called us into the church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be servants in the service of the whole human family, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, 
and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. God promises to all who trust in the gospel forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, the presence of the Holy Spirit in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in that kingdom which has no end. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, we are so honored today that our homily will be given by our UCC National President, Reverend John Dorhauer. During his tenure, Reverend Dorhauer has led and encouraged our denomination to address social justice issues on, on race, white supremacy, and economic injustice. He is a published author of several books, and he hosts a popular weekly podcast called Into the Mystic. So here now with an inspiring message for the season of Pentecost is our UCC president, Reverend John Dorhauer. And they were all together in one place. What a brilliant opening line to one of the most powerful stories ever told. Luke, wink, wink, Theophilus, what a great line that is. And your artisanship, your craft in writing a good story comes through in that line. And they were all together in one place. Here's what I love about that line. It's, it's deceptive. I mean, not in a bad way, but in a brilliant writing kind of way. It hides what's coming and it sort of creates this romanticized, fantasized notion of how good things are. They were all together in one place. Kind of makes you feel good, doesn't it? And what it hides is the cowardice, the betrayal, the doubt, all of that. Cowardice, you ask? Well, um, the last thing these apostles, these disciples heard before Jesus went away from them was, go therefore to all the ends of the earth, preaching and teaching the good news. That's what this whole thing was about, this mission of Jesus, the message of Jesus, the giving up their lives to follow him. It was about the go therefore. And he died for them. He resurrected. He appeared to them after the resurrection. And where were they? They were hidden together in the upper room, scared, afraid. So they were all together in one place, sort of hides the cowardice that they were experienced. The betrayal, you remember the betrayal, don't you? I will never deny you. Yeah. And the doubt. Having resurrected from the dead, having gone to them with this mission, go therefore, they sort of, oh, come on. I don't believe that. I don't believe you. Let me put my fingers in his hands and his side, and then maybe I'll believe. And so Jesus came and did that for Thomas and the others. And where were they? Hidden away in the upper room. And so that opening line, it's like the brilliance of, of Stephen King at its best. You know, a good horror writer, a good tension writer is going to hide what's coming. And they were all together in one place. I mean, let's think about this. Luke, the author of the Acts of the Apostles, has a blank page in front of him and maybe the greatest story to tell ever to be told in the history of the church. This is the Pentecost. And when Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. He's got a blank page. He can start this any way he wants. And that is a brilliant line because it hides the next line that's coming. And suddenly, like the rush of a violent wind, you see, there's an actor waiting in the wings, an actor ready to do her thing that is going to change the entire dynamic. It hides the tension of that powerful moment in that beautiful opening line. And they were all together in one place. And what about this actor? Well, let's back up a little bit. 
and introduce her the way Jesus did. See, this actor has actually always been there. When the story of Genesis uh, begins, I mean, all the way back at the time of the creation, we read, and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters of chaos. And that hovering, that breath, that ruach would change everything. This is the actor always waiting in the wings, present at the birth of Jesus, present at the baptism of Jesus, when like a dove descending from heaven, the voice of God speaks, this is my beloved son. Yeah, there's an actor waiting in the wings. And on the night that Jesus would die, gathered it with his apostles, his disciples, those men and women who would go there for, and sharing with them one last meal, among the many things that he would say to them that night, he threw out this. And it is to your advantage that I leave you. Now let's pause there because how many do you think in the room at that table with Jesus on that night when he was telling them that tomorrow I turn myself over to the Romans to be crucified and you will betray me. Yeah. How many of them in that room that night do you believe understood or accepted what Jesus said when he said, it is to your advantage that I leave you. I mean, they had put all of their hopes, hopes that had built over generations in this being the one that they had been waiting for, that would free them from their enemies. And now on this night, he's saying, I'm going to turn myself over to the enemy. They're going to kill me. You're going to be left alone. And it's to your advantage that I do this. And in that moment, he introduces the actor waiting in the wings. Because, he says, if I don't leave you, the advocate, the Holy Spirit cannot come. Oh. That moment sets up what's about to happen in that room where they were all together in one place. And suddenly, like the rush of a violent wind, here she comes. The Holy Spirit descends upon these cowards, these betrayers, these doubters, these people so filled with fear and anxiety that having given everything up to follow Jesus, when he left them and told them to go there for, what did they do? They hid in this upper room. But Jesus knew that she, the advocate, would come. And suddenly, like the rush of the mighty wind, and there she was, and there they went. This is the birth of the church. That entity, the living body of Christ here on earth, sent to all the ends of the earth to preach the good news and to baptize. It began in that moment. There was a renewal. And in that moment, the spirit knew that it was her role to birth the church. If Luke were to write the story of what's about to happen to a church in need of renewal right now, I think the perfect opening line, somewhat in contrast, but also paralleling the line he wrote to open this story of the Pentecost would read, and they were all not together, and they were all alone in their separate places. That's what the pandemic has done to us, isn't it? We're all alone, and we've been all alone for over a year. Not together in one place, but socially distanced and quarantined and isolated from one another. Meanwhile, there's a renewal coming. And one wonders, is there an actor waiting in the wings? 
is there a Pentecost moment coming that makes the writing of that line and they were all alone in their separate places sort of foreshadowing what's coming? Here's the thing. We have never been without the power and the movement and the impulse of the Holy Spirit. We, as the church, the body of Christ here on earth, have never been without this actor waiting in the wings. She's always there. It is, she is the lifeblood of the church. And there have been moments throughout our history with this creator that we know is God, embodied and incarnated most beautifully and most fully in Jesus. There have always been in relationship with this God times and seasons of renewal. It was this God who, through the voice of the prophet Isaiah, said, Behold, I'm about to do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? And hasn't it begun to dawn on us? We who are not all together, but we who are all alone, not in one place, but in separate places, hasn't it began to dawn on us as what we thought we were doing was just whatever we had to do to get through this, hasn't it begun to dawn on us that what's just happened while we've been all alone in our separate places is nothing short of an invitation to renew and strengthen a church that the world began to wonder about. How relevant is she? How vital is she? How healthy is she? And a year into this pandemic, with the actor waiting in the wings, hasn't it begun to dawn on us that we're about to do a new thing? That we're about to birth a new way of being the church. Don't you feel that in your bones? Don't you feel that in your body? Don't you feel that in your blood, your heartbeat, your pulse beat? Yes, you do, and so do I. And I know that when this pandemic ends and we come out and can be all together in one place again, I know that there's going to be grief and we're gonna mourn the loss and the trauma of the hundreds of thousands of lives that ended prematurely, almost senselessly. Yeah, but I also know there's an actor waiting in the wings and she is there to ensure our advocate, to ensure that we don't miss this moment. And that when given the opportunity, we are about to renew, to strengthen, to build up the church, the body of Christ, not for the sake of the church, for the church is simply a vessel, a means to an end which is God's vision of shalom. The world is ready, has always been ready and receptive to hear the good news of God's redeeming and transformative love. The good news that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And in every generation, the baptized, the confirmed, the members, the believers of the body of Christ, are told to go therefore and preach this good news. And while we were all alone in our separate places with the Holy Spirit waiting in the wings, we discovered a whole new way to go, a whole new way to preach, a whole new way to tell and proclaim the good news. 
I have been calling around, talking to leaders around the church, getting the pulse beat and heartbeat of the church in and through this time. And yes, there's grief and there's loss and there's mourning and there's trauma and there's all of that. But then there's this. Reports of churches growing their membership while all alone in our separate places. New membership classes of new members of churches joining who have never even seen the building of the church that they're about to join. Behold, I'm about to do a new thing. Pentecost is a time of remembering the birth of a church instituted by Christ's advocate, the Holy Spirit, who has never abandoned us and who imagines a future in which we matter. And here she is again, calling on the faithful, calling on the believers, calling on the baptized, calling on the confirmed and saying, trust me, for I'm about to do a new thing. And the church will be renewed. And something new is coming. It could be that we were put here for just such a time as this. And I have no doubt that in time, a new Luke or Theophilus is going to have a story to tell about what a Holy Spirit did in partnership with the people who were all alone in their separate places until, until this is that moment. I pray that together, as we come out of this pandemic, we will take everything that we have learned and experienced about how to be the church and trust the Holy Spirit to do what she's been inviting us to do for some time, but which we've been resisting and say to her, we're with you because we see a future in which the church matters. And we know that there are lives that will be changed by the simple proclamation of this good news, that no matter who you are or where you are, our life's journey, you're welcome here. And you are the beloved here. So yes, let's strengthen the church. Let's renew the body of Christ for the mission that yet lies ahead. Amen. This is the time in our service for the offertory. And today we're taking a special collection for the United Church of Christ's Strengthen the Church Fund. This fund supports leadership development, youth ministry, new church plants, and innovations in existing congregations. To tell us more about the fund is one of our UCC national officers, Reverend Tracy Blackman. Reverend Blackman is one of the authors of the UCC's White Privilege Curriculum, and in recent years, she has become one of the most visible and well-recognized UCC ministers on the national stage. So here with an invitation of giving, is Reverend Tracy Blackman. Greetings, church family. This past year has really been challenging. And as we closed ourselves behind doors of our homes, of our private spaces, the United Church of Christ was able to open more widely our door to you. Because of your generosity and your support, we were able to begin a webinar series that has reached over 19,000 homes already and is still growing. Your national setting coming to you to continue to gather us for times of dialogue and teaching and worship together. Such opportunities are made possible because of your generosity in strengthening the church. Today, you will be collecting the Strength in the Church offering and I offer you this example of what is possible when we give together. Because of you, 
the United Church of Christ will continue to be able to expand its ministries, no matter what the season, no matter what the reason. Thank you for being the generous church that you are. May we continue to be the church, whether we are gathered or whether we are scattered. As Reverend Blackman said, we are so grateful for your generous giving. You can give to the Strengthen the Church Fund securely online via our church's website. Just click the online giving link and then the Strengthen the Church tile. You can also give by writing a check made out to Douglas UCC and mailing it to the address that's on your screen. Be sure to write Strengthen the Church on the check's memo line. Thank you again for your generosity and support. Our offertory song today will be performed for us now by our church members, Jeff Spangler and Elizabeth Estes, accompanied by Peter Black. Make us one, make us one, make us one, undivided body, make us one, make us one, for the sake of your name. One. Make us love, make us love, make us love so the world will know we love you. Make us love, make us love. sake of your name, make us love. Make us pure, make us pure, make us pure and righteous, make us holy. of your name make us pure and make us one make us one make us one undivided body make us one make one for the sake of your name make us one for the sake of your name till you come for the sake of your name We recall this day that on the night of his betrayal, Jesus sat with table with his disciples and his friends, and he took the bread. And he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body broken 
for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, as the meal concluded, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and after a blessing, he gave the cup to those gathered, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us, wherever we may be, receive the gift of God, the bread of heaven. Let us, wherever we may be, receive the gift of God, the cup of blessing. This is the bread of life. This is the cup of blessing. Let us join together in our prayer of thanksgiving. Merciful and loving God, we thank you for this privilege to come to your table. Your table where the sacrifices are known and where the love is present. We ask that you take these earthly elements and transform them into divine elements. That we may experience the fullness of your love through Christ Jesus. We needed this. We needed this moment to be with one another and to be with you. We needed to experience once again that there is always room for us at your table. We needed to taste again the sweetness of your love. Thank you. Thank you for knowing what we need and for providing far more in abundance than we could ever hope for. For it is in your holy name we pray. Amen.
thank you so much for joining us here for worship today at Douglas UCC. We hope to see you all again next Sunday. Until then, live fully, love wastefully, and have the courage to be all that God has created you to be. We are a grateful people, and so it is. Amen. Thank you.